While I was at Doha, Qatar for the FIFA World Cup 2022, curiosity got a better part of me and I took a tour of the Doha, Qatar Metro. Please join me. A little bit of uh, the Doha Qatar Metro now. It's an advanced rail system and it goes at the speed of 100 kilometers per hour. It's one of the fastest driverless metro stations in the world and stretches to 75 kilometers, has 37 stations spread across three lines. The three lines are the red line, the gold line, and the green line. They were all inaugurated in 2019. I heard it took just about four years to actually complete those lines although the concept came to qatar in 2009 uh, but by 2019 they had inaugurated the three lines and the three lines are fully functional as we speak they're operational i heard the second phase will be completed by 2026 and that second phase would uh, see the expansion of this first phase and an addition of the blue line this is a bright morning and this is a typical side of the streets. Now let's step out and head to the bus stop from where we go to the metro station. This luxurious bus is actually the Metrolink shuttle service, which is a complimentary transport service that allows commuters get to the stations faster and easier. It is fully air conditioned, it is comfortable and it is free. Some of the routes are long and some are just few streets behind the metro stations. All you have to do to use them is to download uh, an app called Carwa Journey. Once you download, you just tap in when you get on the bus uh, and that's it. It takes you to the metro station from where you can take your trains to wherever you are going. It is totally free, it's comfortable and uh, um, for any of the routes you have at least two or three. Some commuters would prefer to actually ride their bikes to the metro station and they can park it here as you can see. Somewhere at the back there is the space to park your cars should you want to park and take the metro. Let's start from Ogba Ibinafi. There are facilities at each of the metro stations to make it easy for you to get to the trains. You could use the lifts or the escalator, whichever one you prefer, depending on how quickly you want to get to the trains or to get to your destination. That's the lift there. I guess it was in use when the gentleman wanted to. I also wanted to use it, but I decided to actually use um, the escalator. A travelator or a moving walkway or what some other call moving sidewalk is what you see at all of the metro stations you also find it at hamad international airport it's a slow moving conveyor transports people across a horizontal or inclined plane over a short to medium distance um, because of the distance to the train it helps you you know just give you some leap if i can put it that way and if you choose not to use it you can actually walk by the side the environment is clean you have trash cans almost at every corner. You have signs pointing you in the direction as to where to go. You have police men just walking around, not intimidating anyone, but you know, just ensuring that people are okay. At each of the metro stations, you have ATM, should you want to get some cash, vending machines, should you want to get a drink or something. You also have places where you can recharge your card. To use the metro, you have to tap in here and uh, you tap out at the metro station where you would exit. So you tap in, when you are entering, you tap out with your card. 
which you can load from time to time and then use as you commute using the metro. Although during the World Cup, the hire card gives you a free pass. The hire card, H-A-Y-Y-A, was the temporary residence permit issued to those who came to be part of the World Cup from all over the world. But residents can actually get um, a card that they can load from time to time and use to commute on the metro. Now we are two floors underground where we'll now take the train. Some of the metro, you go like three floors to get to the train. This sign will show you where you are and also indicates the direction of the train. There is a train to the left and another one to the right. So you can just look at it and determine which one you need to board. There is also a sign that tells you how long it will take for the next train to get to you, whether it's two minutes or three minutes. There are usually three trains on the queue and each one would indicate how long it will take to reach you. The first is always the closest, so if that indicates two minutes, the next one might indicate eight minutes and the next one would indicate, let's say, 12 minutes. While waiting for your train, you can actually sit down. The environment is comfortable for you to relax. My train is here. Let's head out on the gold line. We have just about a minute to get on the train before the door closes. The inside is very comfortable and neat and there is even also provision for those with some form of disability. Door is closing. Stand clear. The chairs can be reclined. Sometimes when there are no persons with disability on board, I've seen people use it. But the signs are there for you to know that it's specially reserved for those with some form of um, disability. While the train moves on, you have signs that let you know stop that you are, the station you are approaching, the direction of the train. It also shows the map of the entire metro system so in case you need to change your line you know where to change your line This is Mishareb. Mishareb is an interchange for, I think, all of the lines. All of the lines, both red, green, and gold lines. Mishareb is a major station. I think it would be good for us to take a brief stop here. Let me show you Mishareb. You'll love it. Mishareb would be the largest, the biggest of the metro stations with so many escalators, so many lifts because 
it serves as an interchange to all the lines. So if you are heading towards a direction or another direction or an opposite direction, you can always take a train at Mishurep. Let me show you around. I believe Mishurep has three floors, really. Yes, three floors. If not even more. I've never exited at Mishurep before, so I wouldn't even know uh, if there are two floors or just one floor above a certain level uh, let's go to that level i'll show you now but i know that you have to go like three floors underground to board the trains i think some trains you can board on the second floor you can board some on the third floor when i mean floor i mean underground some of the trains you can board on minus three floor some you can board on minus two floor there are also signs everywhere for you to know where to take. You find out that many of these metro stations has the signs of the different stadium on the train itself or inside the train or in the metro station. It's so that people who came for the World Cup can easily know which train to bus or the direction to go. Although you have many staff around who would also help everyone know where they need to go. So you just all you have to do is approach them ask them for direction and they will help you but if you look up you see this stadium that stadium and showing the arrow to where you need to board the train this is Mishareb and it's a big lounge in itself many escalators leading to different directions As I earlier noted, you have practically the same facility at all the metro stations. You might just have some metro stations bigger than others. The facilities would include signage that points in the direction of where you are, where each train is going, the color of the line, if it's the green line or the red line or the gold line. You also have a display of the train that is approaching and how long it will take for that train to get to you. You have um, washrooms, you have sitting area. Each metro station also has a polling station, a first aid area, some places you could use the ATM or a vending machine. You have escalators, you have lifts. You have, you know, basically everything that will make your commuting very, very easy. And of course you have the staff of the metro system standing at every point to assist people get to their next destination. You have them by the door of the trains so as to ensure safety of passengers. If you want to enter and um, they see that the door is about closing, they tell you to stop and wait for the next train. The next train is just two minutes or three minutes away anyway. They are also around to help ensure that people don't get lost or get um, delayed unnecessarily. Let me also quickly note that
if you're traveling with your spouse or your child or your children or you're traveling as a family you also have the coach that is for the gold members those ones pay a little more i'm sure as we go along you see the difference slight difference maybe in comfortability or in the design really this tray is for al Reza, wall of qatar the next station is al Bida. passengers are reminded not to leave their belongings as we travel on any of the trains this lets you know the station you've left and indicates the station you are heading to you can see the arrow even moving as you journey on indicating the station you are heading to yes it's been announced where you are heading to the line that you are you are boarded but you also see the lines so that at least for people who are impaired in their airing they can at least look at it and know the direction the train is heading not only are all the coaches neatly kept uh, well maintained air conditioned you also have them smelling very very fresh There are different tourist sites in Doha, Qatar, and one of such is Souk Wakif. I understand that Souk means market, so Souk Wakif will mean Wakif market. It's a major one that you need to visit anytime you find yourself in Qatar. You might have seen it during the World Cup. So we're going to take a train to Souk Wakif. The metro station itself is called Sukuwaki, so I'll stop there so I can take you around and then, you know, see if I can get to 
the market itself. So let's head to Sukhua Cave. Let me share a very funny one. I, well, I was carried away by what I was doing, so I entered a coach which was reserved for gold members. The staff came to me and said, well, are you a gold member? But very politely, I said, no. I said, oh, sorry, you're not allowed to sit down. I said, oh, no problem. Thank you. So I went to the next coach. <laughs> you can naturally move across coaches. All of them are comfortable, really. I saw this very, very educative history of World Cup. It would be nice to have you enjoy it also. The very first World Cup was in 1930. All right, let's follow through with all the years up until 2022. Hope you are enjoying my video if you do please leave a comment share the link and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't Remember I told you earlier that um, you need to tap out at the station you are exiting from. Before I tap out, let me show you something very interesting. Is the washroom. It's neatly kept. Smells fresh. Well maintained. 
you have water running you have your tissue paper you have water you have the sprinkler to help you clean up properly Qatar actually as a whole observe the recycling policy it is advised that you don't throw your tissue paper inside the toilet or flush it down the toilet there is always a bin there is always a trash can inside the toilet and all around for you to throw your waste into when you finish you can actually wash your hands you have the liquid soap the taps are running some are automatic and some you just need to press it like I just did. The waste management policy of Qatar is very, very commendable. So even at home, it's not only in public places alone. Even in your homes or at the hotels, you are always advised not to flush your tissue paper, whether used or not, down the toilet. So you see the same thing play out in all the washrooms in public places. There's always somewhere you can dump your trash, including the toilet roll that you've just used to clean up. Now we can tap out and head out to Souk Wakif. I think the Souk Wakif metro station is also quite big. Maybe not as big as Mishrib. But I'll check it later. I guess because it serves major markets, including the Sukuwa Cave. One thing you notice at all the metro station is the deliberate thought given to accessibility people who have disabilities or parents who have children and have to walk long distance or parents who have their children on strollers there are spaces with stairs but beside it you'll find a lift most times it just takes you up a few meters but when you think of people with children on strollers you would understand why these lifts are there. As we make to exit the metro station on our way out to Sukuwa Kiev, you would observe the walls are beautifully adorned with the traditional um, Arabic designs. You find pictures, you find so many. It's also beautiful. And this also leads you to a section of the exit that is all golden. The doors, the walls, everything is golden until you actually come out of the metro station.
and voila, you are at Souk Wakif. Let me show you. Sukwa Kiv is in Centre Doha and is close to Corniche. It's a highbrow area, as you can see. Because of time, I would not be able to take us through Sukwa Kiv in this video. But I am exploring doing another video, one more video maybe, to show us Sukwa Kif. Well, without further ado, let's head back to the metro station. Hope you're enjoying the video. If you do, please leave a comment. Let me know if you can remember some of the stops we've made so far. By the way, I learned a few Arabic words, so maybe I can just um, share with you. Abibi. A-B-I-B-I. Abibi is friend, so <laughs> I can call you Abibi. Mudir. Mudir means boss. Mudir is boss. You know. Yala is move. So if I want you to move on, I'll say yala, yala. That's Y A W L A. This one is also simple. Kalas means finish. Kalas, finish. K A L E S. I hope it's K. I don't know whether it's Q, but you know, it's called Kalas, which means finish. And of course, you need to know this also. Thank you in Arabic is Shukran. Shukran, that's S H U. K R A N. Just as I said, it might be Q R A N, but just know that the pronunciation is Shukran. And here, one greeting you find very common is Al Salam Alaikum. Al Salam Alaikum. It's the greeting for everyone. It's not. Um, it's Arabic. It means peace unto you. So you find everyone of every religion and of every creed greet you as Salam Alaikum. And of course, when you answer them or respond, um, maybe you respond the same way and you tell them you are fine. They say, Alhamdulillah, which means glory be to God. All right. So how many can you remember? Let me go over it again. Abibi, which means friend. Mudil, which means boss. Yala, which means move on or go ahead. Kalas, which is finish. Then Shukran, which is thank you. Asalam alaikum, which is peace be unto you, and alhamdulillah, which is thank God. Without playing this video back, how many of those Arabic words can you remember? Share with us in the comment section. As usual, you know, I'll tap in to take the train. And then I'll tap out at our next stop. Uh, we have just one or two more stops. Alwakra is at the end of the red line, is to the south of Doha. Because it's also a terminal, we'll be able to see Doha from inside the tree. This is Awakra Metro Station. It's lovely for you to see how a part of Doha is. The Cornish end are well developed there, the highbrow area, but it will be good for us to also see the other side of Doha. You have a lot of migrants staying at Awakra. It's always very, very busy. For every metro station, you have 
parking spaces for cars so you can drive to the metro station park your car take the metro to wherever you want to go to and then come back and pick your car it's free in the distance there you can see carports you can take as many cars as possible Alwakra is very interesting because um, that's where you have many, many new developments coming on. You also can see in the distance, you know, how the houses are built, major express. If there's anything that Qatar has, they have very good rules. Some of them are six lanes, even more than six lanes. Even within the streets, at hard, well developed. The infrastructure here is beautiful. Maybe um, I'll see if I can get enough materials to do a road trip and then you know bring it to you i would explore that also but at least i'm able to do the metro so we see how well the metro system runs in dubakata
It's interesting how some metro stations are spelled and how they are pronounced. So follow me. Let's go on this particular ride so you can learn with me. This train is for Al-Wakrafenis. Station is Al-Doha Al-Jadida. Passengers are reminded not to leave their belongings on the train. Our final lap on our metro journey for today should take us to Qatar International Airport, opposite Ogba Ibinafi. After the Hamad International Airport was opened and had been in use, this old airport was used for cargo only until about a month or two before the World Cup when it was renovated and opened up so that it could also fly people from Qatar and to Qatar for the purpose of the World Cup. Maybe later it could be converted back to just cargo only airport. The Hamad International Airport, I think, is the number one in the whole world. You can Google it, it is a city on its own. And here we are, Okba Ibn Nafi, where we actually started from. 
it is directly opposite the Qatar International Airport. This airport is different from the Hamad International Airport. This was the old airport that was in use before the Hamad International Airport was constructed. Should I squeeze in one or two of the road trips I made? Should I? Should I not? Okay, let me just show you a little of my road trip to whet your appetite. Let's take this tunnel that links a major highway. All the signs give you a direction to where the roads are leading to, but they also serve to notify road users if there are accidents on some other roads. So it flashes and lets you know that, oh, there is an accident on road so, so, so. So as you're driving, it helps you with directions, but it also notifies you if there is an accident on another road. A fuel station or what some call a gas station. Some of the gas stations have car washes where you can, after fueling or even if you don't want to fuel your car, you can drive in there and wash your car. I think most of the car washes are driving. You drive in, you can stay inside your car while the car is being washed. If they need to clean the inside, you only have to just step out briefly they clean it and you are back inside your car and you drive off i think to wash a car is 40 kataria yes to put in perspective a dollar is about four kataria it's not even up to it's about 350 kataria We are now driving past the Al Tumama Stadium, which is in Al Tumama, one of the stadiums used for the World Cup. Qatar is a desert, just as most of the Middle East. But you find green areas here, a lot of green areas where you can sit and have picnics, where people can jog on a daily basis. You can drive to any of these green areas and just park your car and relax there. Nobody would bother you. Most houses even have trees planted in them. I think almost all the houses. I hear that the trees were actually imported. All the stadium, if you look at them, you find trees planted in big pots. Some are actually planted in the soil. Everywhere you go in Qatar, you have trees and they are well maintained. They are all green. And you wonder, how did the desert get to have this much green area or trees? I heard also that the trees were all imported and then planted and watered and maintained and grown so that at least Qatar can boast of cleaner air and a good environment. It's lovely. The green area adds beauty to the environment in Qatar. Hope you enjoyed my video. Subscribe if you haven't and leave a comment. And do press the notification bell so that anytime I post a new video, especially the one about the road trip, you can be notified. Shukran Abibi. <laughs>